Hello guys and thank you for listening or watching another episode of Live Free Podcast where I talk about living that life of freedom, that life of rest and expansion in Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in Sunday, September the 29th, 2004. I have a beautiful word from the Lord today and I'm going to come and just ask God to breathe a fresh revelation on this word that it will not be still killed nor destroyed but produce much fruit in the name of jesus so today guys i have a word and as you can see from the title and the thumbnail god is asking the question why is there so much deception in the church i'm going to say that again why so much deception manipulation with his body why aren't we able to discern false from truth? The goat from the sheep. The wolves from the sheep. Why is the lines blurred? Today the Holy Spirit has a word he's given me. And in this, in this word, God wants us to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. He wants us to begin to open our eyes, to pull off the veil, to help us to see why certain things aren't discerned properly or the way he wants us to see them. Mm. And I'm getting a fresh even revelation even as I speak right now. So God is saying there's a lot of deception in his body. And he gave me a few scriptures to hone in on. But right now, I can feel by the spirit of the Lord, he's speaking to me right now. And he's saying there is an absence of love for people. That's not in my notes. There's an absence of love for people. Love people, love God. That is the fulfillment. He said there's an absence of love. So let's keep it going. Why so much deception in the church? We know that light and darkness cannot coexist. And anybody who think it can is being deceived even right now. We're not perfect. This is not about perfection. This is not about doing and saying everything right. That's not what this is about. It's about a heart issue. And God began to speak to me regarding the heart issues and some of the things that he has given me to actually speak on. I'm going to be um, giving you guys a few scriptures, but we want to really hone in on the discernment. Why aren't we able to discern the times and seasons like the children of Essachar? God's body should be equipped and should be in a position where they're not easily distracted and detracted. That somebody shouldn't be able to come and just knock you off course even after God has given you the truth. So there's a lot of deception going on in the body of Christ because, get this, there's not only a lack of love, but there's a lack of fear of the Lord as well in the body of Christ. So God's saying that it's a lot of deception in his body in this season because there is a um, uh, people that are looking through the lens of idolatry. Idolatry will have you to miss the truth. Idolatry is anything, you've heard me say this before, that takes your eye off God. It comes in many shapes, many sizes, and many faces, many forms. Idolatry could be your business, your ministry, could be a pastor, a leader, apostle, a prophet. Idolatry could be your children, could be your spouse, could be you're honed in on the kingdom spouse, you want to get married so bad, you're idolizing that. Idolatry could be money. Idolatry comes in many shapes and, sh and sizes. And it's simply, it is an extreme admiration, right? Of love or reverence for something or someone. I'm going to say that again. It's an extreme admiration for loving or reverence of loving something or someone. It's worshipped as if it is God. So that can be exercising. Some people exercise three times a day. Whatever the focus goes, the anointing flows. So whatever you focus on, 
that's what's going to be highlighted in your life, which is why God wants us to be focused in on him. Because if we seek in him, then all these other things will be added unto us, according to Matthew 6 and 33. So he's saying that we're looking through the lens of idolatry in this season in his body. And God is saying that if the eye is dark, then the whole body is dark. So there's no such thing in idolizing a pastor or a leader or idolizing your job, your children is idolized. You got some people that idolize their grandchildren, their children, they idolize the things that they have, materialistic things. And then you have some that idolizes their pets. They put their pet value on an animal more than they do a human being. They will buy the best of the best for their pets and step over a homeless person. I'm going somewhere today because that's a sensitive topic for a lot of people I see on social media. They put pets and animals way above human beings. But God is saying today, you're looking through the lens of idolatry and he doesn't want that for his people. So we have to begin to redirect our focus back on Jesus. So the Bible talks about people that are blessed because they're able to see. The Bible says, blessed are your eyes because they see. So what does that mean? That means to be able to witness, to be able to understand or accept what God is showing you. And then he also says in another passage of scripture, when John sends his disciples to Jesus to ask him, is he the Messiah? Or should we look for another Messiah? And Jesus began to tell John's disciples, blessed are those that are not, not, that are not offended because of me. What did Jesus really mean when he was saying that? What he meant when he was saying that was, he said, he began to give you the answer after that. He said, the blind see, the lame walk. And he started talking about the things that were happening because of him healing and delivering people in his ministry. In other words, God is saying, when he gives you a word of correction or rebuke, when he is showing you something, a lot of times with the deception that happens in the body of Christ, God will begin to show us the truth and we get offended because either we don't like the way the word was packaged or who it came through, who spoke that word, or we don't like the fact that it is contrary to the way we are thinking and feeling. But that's a dangerous place to be. The Bible says, he who um, doesn't heed correction is stupid. In the book of Proverbs, it says it just that bluntly. So we have to be open to change and correction from the Lord when he is showing us the truth. Because a lot of times, when you are being deceived and seduced into a certain type of teaching or a certain type of thing, and I'm also and I'm, I'm honing in on the body of Christ. I'm honing in on the truth that the why the church is so deceived right now because looking through the lens of idolatry, you begin to see things for what you want them to be instead of what God is showing you. And I'm going to give you some examples. Some examples of this is when I have been in ministries, um, affiliated with ministries. I have been, um, uh, if it's through a YouTube, uh, social media, whatever it's through, Instagram, social media, whatever capacity, Facebook, God would begin to show me if I'm feasting on a particular leader's, and when I say feasting, God, I, I, a lot of times he'll correlate this to parables, illustrations, or he'll use food as in terms of your eating and feeding on the word. So a lot of times if we're feasting on a particular um, influencer on social media, God, if you're, if you're connected to the vine, what ends up happening is, I'm going to show you this and it goes both ways. If you're connected to Jesus and you're feasting on someone and you're you're eating and feasting on what they're speaking, which is the word of God, which is supposed to be the word of God. God will begin to show you in a dream, which is what he typically does to me, or a vision or a word of knowledge, or he'll give me a word of wisdom. And he'll begin to show me the spirit behind that individual that I'm feasting on. I'm not talking about something I just 
happen to watch once or twice and I'm just kind of going in passing or I'm dealing with people, I'm just going in passing. But when I begin to get in an atmosphere, even if it's on the workplace, it's in ministry, he's always done this to me. He will begin to show me the atmosphere of that place or begin to give me a word of knowledge or a dream or a vision about that individual that I'm feasting on so that I can either pump the brakes or proceed with caution or go or either just go for it on green that this is him this is what he wants me to listen to for this season so the other way that it can go is if you're not connected to the vine what do I mean by that Jesus said I am the vine he is the branch and apart from him you could do absolutely nothing what does nothing mean exactly what nothing is nothing meaning your perception is off your judgment is off so you're not able to perceive that in the way God wants you to if you're feasting off of a witch or if you're feasting off of a warlock or if you're feasting off of a false prophet so now what you're doing is you're not connected to the vine so you don't have that discernment like you would have had case in point it was a, a, a dry season in my life where I had turned my back on God I just keep it keep it real no I didn't renounce God but a time where I wasn't reading my word and fellowshipping and praying like I should have been is when I noticed those are the seasons where I was more deceived than any other time because why he said apart from me you can do nothing. You cannot be the supernatural devil with carnal thinking, with carnality. It has to be done with the word of God. And if you're not feeding on the word of God and, and prayer and fellowship with Jesus, then you have your discernment is skewed, is dim. Your lights are dim. This is what he, what he talks about. He talks about the lamps. Keep your lamp burning. That means stay in fellowship, stay in consistent communion and prayer and reading of your word. Okay? So looking through the lens of idolatry, an extreme admiration of love and reverence for something or someone, an act of worship as if it was God. The fear of the Lord, he said, is also missing. Where's the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is one of the seven spirits of God. Look it up. There are seven spirits of God in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, I believe. And it talks about one of those spirits of God being the fear of the Lord. God did, I did a teaching on the fear of the Lord. If you want to go back in my Rolodex and begin to listen to that teaching, it's in a profound teaching how God took me through a season and he started showing me what it really meant to fear, the, to fear God. And so there's no reverential respect for God, meaning we'll ask everyone else before we ask him something. We'll ask everyone else advice before we ask God, God's advice. God should be the first person and the first um, one we run to. He wants to be that. And then after we run to him, the way he may display or show you the answer is up to him. So he can show you the answer through somebody speaking it to you, prophesying it to you, you looking at a sermon or you hearing something or see it on a billboard, you see a sign or you see it um, or you hear a conversation. However he chooses to give you the answer, that's up to him. But the source should always be him that we're running to. So God is saying we're looking in the body of Christ through the lens of idolatry. And we need to redirect that focus before we become subject to what we're feasting on. Whatever you submit to, you become subject to. Be it bad or be it good. Whatever you submit to, you become subject to. That's very important because it's a lot of people right now are in a mass state of confusion in the body of Christ because so many are being um, uncovered in this season Idolatry is being uncovered, perversion, lust, fornication, adultery, and the list goes on. Sexual immorality is being uncovered big time in the body of Christ. And so people, we have to understand as a body that God, God says if the eye is dark, the entire body is dark. There's no such thing as your spiritual eyes being dark but you still having discernment no the bible says in ephesians 1 and 18 let the eyes of your heart which is your spirit be enlightened that you will know the hope of your calling 
of his calling for your life. So blessed are your eyes, God says, because they see. That's a blessing to be able to perceive and see. So I know it's not me, but it's by God's grace that I'm able to see anything. Because we don't have the ability to see a fly, to, to rebuke a fly. All power and authority comes from Jesus Christ, him and him alone. Not from a pastor, not from a job, not from money, not from power or popularity or who you know or who you got connections with. It all comes from Jesus Christ. The anointing destroys the yoke. The, the, per, the perception we get is through the lens of Christ. So he also said this. He says, wherever you find deception, you will find some sort of disconnect from God. And that's what I just explained to you in my seasons. Wherever you find deception, you're going to find a disconnect from the source. There's a disconnect somewhere. Why was I deceived? How come I didn't see this? Well, chances are you probably did see it, but we didn't recognize it to be the voice of God. You probably thought the dream was just bad pizza or bad food that you ate the night before or somebody explained it away. The enemy sent somebody along the way to snatch that seed out. The Bible talks about the parable of the sower. Read that. Please read that. There are three or four different types of people. One that hears the word, knows the word, and reap a hundredfold. And some that just hears the word, word, but because of the issues of life, it chokes the word out. Meaning like, you'll hear the word on Sunday, you'll go to church, but because you have no connection during the week, the only time you're hearing the word is on Sunday. And so because the issues of life, life is life in, and it happens, and it's normal, that the things that happen, because there's no real connection only to that pastor that's speaking on Sunday, you the word is being choked every time it's being spoken. The enemy is stealing the word and choking the word because the life things are happening and, and you don't really have a connection with the vine. So he's saying that wherever you find deception, you will find some sort of disconnect from God. His word has to be the final authority. So God's word has to be the final authority over opinions, over ideologies, over what we were born and raised in traditions of men that had made the word of God of no effect. We're, 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 we're still treading on the same waves. God is trying to do a new thing and we're still carrying old, old stuff that's not even in the Bible that we were taught in church as children. So the Bible, the God says you have made the word of God of no effect because of traditions of men, something that he never said, but because it was passed down, we kept it and held on to it. Looking through the lens of idolatry. Let's get, get back to that. So the lens of idolatry is idols, anything that takes your eye off God. I feel so strongly to keep saying about these animals and children because those are the two major things people idolize, their children and their pets. God wants to rip that down and wants to build a new foundation so when life starts lifing, you can have a solid uh, uh, a balance and rock that you're standing on, which is Jesus Christ. That's how it works. Apart from me, he said you can do nothing. So when we start to disconnect ourselves. When we start not to have a thirst and hunger for righteousness, the Bible says, if you have a thirst and hunger for righteousness, you shall be filled. But guess what I do? I pray, Lord, give me a thirst and hunger for righteousness because you can't do nothing without him. Seek me and you will find me and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart, God says. Anytime you are open to the supernatural, he says, without the word of God being the solid foundation in your life, you open yourself up to deception. He's showing you in different ways how things happen in the body of Christ while we are so uh, discombobulated and off kilter. There's so many different reasons. So he's just naming a few. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is some of the things that he has shown me. When you try to have a relationship with the supernatural world without the foundation of his word being the final authority, you open yourself up. You are breeding ground for this deception. You are you the perfect person for Satan to come in to manipulate and deceive and control. 
So many people are trying to figure out how come they didn't see this pastor, how come they didn't discern it, how come they didn't know this was happening. Can I set the record straight? God has shown me multiple people, even on YouTube, anybody that I watch on YouTube that I'm feasting on, he has shown me that I watch on the consistent. Sometimes he'll just have me to watch on the consistent so he can show me what's behind that individual ministry or person that I'm listening to. I've, I mean, I, I, I can name people uh, from Apostle Joshua Giles. I've had about four or five dreams about him. Uh, Millie, the kingdom of God matters, four or five dreams about her. I've had dreams about prophetic insight. I mean, when I tell you, the list goes on and on and on. Why? Because I was feasting off of those people. Be it bad or be it good, whatever it was, um, I can just keep going. I can just, uh, Camille and Sean Hendricks, I've just had multiple dreams about them and their ministry. So many different dreams. Some was good, some not so good. And it's not my place to get up and say what and who, because God has not released me to, to do that. But what he has released me to do is I pray consistently for our family, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, consistently to pray, to pray, to pray. And some, some of them has, have been such a huge blessing to me, huge blessing. So... I'm going to keep going. So he said, anytime you open yourself up to the supernatural without the word of God being the bedrock, you open yourself up to deception. He says, stick to the blueprint. The word of God is the blueprint. He said, the manifestations, the crystals, the horoscopes, the mediums, the man, man the um, me, uh, yoga, the horoscopes, the um, meditations on everything but him. Is a breeding ground for deception and destruction. That's a breeding ground. That's a witchcraft breeding ground when you get into those type of things. And I'm saying that because a lot of Christians intertwine with the demonic and with God. And the Bible says that you cannot eat from the table of demons and from the table of the Lord. You're going to have to make a decision. And you're wondering why, what is going on? I don't understand what is happening. And, and, and you're still holding on to my sign as a Leo, my sign as a Capricorn. Uh, you, you, you identify by something that's dark and demonic. And then you're wondering why you couldn't see this over here in the church. I cannot tell you how many Christians still identify their identity is wrapped up in the horoscope. That's the first thing that come out of their mouth. What's your sign? When's your birthday? Now, I used to do the same thing, so I'm not even condemning anyone. But when you know better, you do better. And that, and I, that had to be broken off of me because it was such a part of me and such a part of my identity. It's crazy what we latch on to that has nothing to do with nothing. But that's what we do as people. But God is setting the record straight. He's wanting us to redirect our eyes to him so that he can give you the eyes of, and the mind of God. To see people the way he see them. Love them the way he love them. There's a lack of love and fear of God in the body of Christ that's missing. We can sit in church and leave church and go do all kind of atrocities. That's a lack of fear of God. And we wonder why we're being deceived. And things are happening behind the scenes and we're unable to detect it. Because we're eating from the table of demons and from the table of the Lord. And God said, I will have no other gods before me, no other idols before me. And he mean, he said what he said, and he means what he means. And until we can get that in our brain, ingrained in our brain, to understand that God's word is final, he can love you and you can still go to hell. You better hear what I'm saying today. So, the, the identifying with things that are demonic, yoga, horoscopes, mediums, meditations i manifested this that's a witchcraft um freemasonry um eastern stars all that stuff all of that demonic stuff uh even the fraternity and sororities 
People are renouncing that now. If you look up, pull up YouTube and you type in sororities renouncing this, renouncing that, God is bringing everything to the light and he's given us a chance to repent because he's long suffering. So he began to take me to a couple of places in the Bible, Ezekiel 14 and four, I'm gonna start there first because it talks about God answering us um, it, with, from the idolatry in our hearts. So if you have idols in your heart and you're listening to a leader or a pastor or if, you, or if you're idolizing something or someone, God will speak to you from that idol in your heart. You want it? And I'm just gonna read the scriptures for you that he gave me, Ezekiel 14 and four. And this scripture begins to talk about God answering us from the idols in our hearts, right? So Ezekiel was to tell the elders a message from the Lord. The Lord promised that any person in Israel, not just these elders who was an idolater at heart and set a stumbling block in his own path by consulting a false prophet for divine guidance would receive an answer from Yahweh, not from the idol. So God basically was saying in Ezekiel 14 and 4, he says, therefore speak to them and say to them, thus says the Lord God, every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him and what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet, get this, he says, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols. So God is saying that you put a stumbling block and you have idols and you have all this idolatry. You're looking through the lens of idolatry is what he's saying. He said, then you come to the house of God, to the prophet for an answer. And this is why I just said, because we have a disconnect is what the Holy Spirit says, is what leads us into deception from the vine. So when you have an idol or you're looking through the lens of idolatry, there's a disconnect from the Holy Spirit, from God. And so as a result, you are sitting in front of a person that you can't even discern if they are one man or woman of God. Case in point, there's so many people going around on the internet right now that's posting uh, videos from the Celestial, and they're actually head, helping to spread the witchcraft that is going on with that ministry or with her. And they don't realize they have been partakers, they have been seduced into that particular woman's words because they're not coming from God, right? So I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols. And so we see, if you go down to verse, uh, chapter 14, verse nine, um, it talks about, and if the prophet is induced to speak anything i the lord have induced that prophet and i will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among the people of israel so god is saying not only will the people suffer for listening to the false idolatry for listening to or worshiping a thing or someone or something or a person place or thing whatever the idol is not only will you the person suffer that's listening or partaking, but the person who's giving the information is going to fall under the judgment of God as well. So God then began to take me to the book of Revelations. And then he began to talk, uh, show me, you know, um, in the book of Revelations, he had me to hone in on the loveless church, the compromising church, and the corrupt church. And this is Revelations 2. But he began to highlight to me Revelations 2, and I'm going to hone in on the part, um, verse 18, about the corrupt church. And this is actually what's going on right now in the body of Christ is why there's a disconnect. Again, we're going to go back to the witchcraft. We're going to go back to the idolatry. Wherever you find witchcraft, you're going to find idolatry. You're going to find manipulation, and you're going to find the spirit of control and seduction. So co the corrupt church, um, verse 18 says, and to the angel of the church in um, by tear writes, it says, these things says the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works. Now he's talking to the church, right? The corrupt church. He said, I know your works your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. He says, but verse 20, nevertheless, I have these few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess, come on, 
to teach and seduce. Did not just say the spirit of seduction by way of the Holy Spirit is giving me this, but it's aligning with God's word. He says, you allow this, that prophet, this Jezebel, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So here we go again with the idolatry. Everything that is coming as a form of idolatry comes by way of seduction. It comes by way of manipulation. It comes by way of control, which is why the body of Christ is not able to discern the truth because, because there's a disconnection from Jesus. The root of it is taking your eye, idol, taking your eyes off God. This is the root cause. God not only wants to deal with the symptom, he's wanting to deal with the root. And the root is idolatry. So then it says in verse 21, and I have gave her time to repent and her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Again, God is long suffering. He will give you time to repent. When correction and rebuke and reproof and reprimand comes and we do not repent, but we dig our heels in further. And even you have some people that even dig in so far where they begin to defend the false prophet. They begin to defend the idol and, and give you a reason why they should put their children first. They'll give you a reason why the business is so important and not the family. They'll give you all these reasons, but God says he'll give you time to repent. And when he, that time is up and only God knows when that time is going to be up. He says, he says, indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her, come on, guilty by association those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds i will kill her children with death come on god deals with us generationally he said and all, she, he said and all the churches shall know that i am he who stretches searches the minds and the hearts and i will give to each one according to their works so God is saying that all of this stuff is intertwined, idolatry, manipulation, witchcraft, control. And the reason why the body of Christ is not able to discern the difference and they don't have the wisdom of God and they're caught off guard and things are happening is because when God gives us the truth, instead of us repenting and renouncing and rejecting and coming into alignment with him, we dig our heels in further and defend the idolatry. We defend the people. We say, okay, you're talking against God's anointed. You're doing this and you're doing that. But really, you're preaching in the name of God, but against God. Because God is trying to provide a way of escape. The Bible says there's no temptation that has seized us except, except that which is common to man. He, they, the Bible says, but God is faithful when you are tempted. He said he will provide a way of escape. But a lot of times, God will provide the way of escape through a form of a person exposing, through a form of a, the, his written word, through a form of a dream or a vision, through the form of somebody speaking it. But we do not want to hear the truth because we are emotionally entangled with the yoke of bondage. We are emotionally tied and seduced to that thing that we idolize so much. So God is saying that we need to start looking through the lens of Christ, repenting, get back in alignment because you don't know how long he's going to be, wait and give us a chance to repent. We, we don't know that. So we need to, when we hear the word, we need to be quick to forgive. We need to be quick to repent. We need to be quick to obey because we don't know the day or hour that not only is his return is coming, but we don't know the day of hour that our life may be required and that we may expire without doing these things. Or him giving us over to what we love so much. Now, when the truth comes, you can't hear it if you wanted to because he's giving you over to that thing. So there's a lot of deception and corruption and it's directly tied with the spirit of Jezebel's tied with the spirit of control Idols is the major thing that God was showing me that we're looking through the lens of idolatry. And God wants to break that off of us. 
He wants us to come to him. He didn't say that we were going to be perfect. We weren't going to miss it. We weren't going to, you know, uh, we was going to do everything right. But when truth is presented, it cannot be compromised for the sake of getting along or the sake of peace. When truth is presented, we have to be quick to obey because delayed obedience is still, this delayed disobedience is still disobedience. I'm going to say that again. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. We have to move when God says move. We're on his time. He's not on ours. So we have to know that the church, he said, needs to wake up from the slumber. How do we do that? We do that through repentance. We do that through prayer. We do that through fasting. If we just can't seem to get it, we need to fast and pray. And we do that through the Word of God. And the Word of God has to be final in your life. In spite of what somebody's preaching that's in the era, in spite of what uh, who's popular, in spite of the gift of the person, if they prophetic and uh, you just feel like that gift is just all that in a bag of chips, we have to begin to worship the giver of the gift and not the gift itself. And that is the word for today, guys. I just wanted to hone in on that, but my prayer in the name of Jesus is for every yoke to be destroyed and every burden to be lifted from off of the minds and the hearts of the people of God. And where there has been manipulation, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is broken right now in the name of Jesus and that we will begin to realign ourselves with the kingdom of God and come from out from among them and be ye separate. Because God says, do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. When he shows you something, you need to respond. We need to respond as a body. We need to stop coming against people that God is speaking through to give us the answer. Because we don't like the way it's packaged and we don't like who's saying it. It doesn't work like that. God is in control and he uses whomever he wants to use. He anoints whoever he wants to anoint. We don't get to tell him how he needs to let us know things or give us things. If he chooses to give us a dream, he gives us a dream. If he chooses to give us a vision, he gives us a vision. It's his thing. He do what he want to do with it. And you heard me say that before. So that is the word for today. And I pray that you will be blessed, anointed, and favored. And I pray that you will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and will not get entangled with the yoke of bondage. And until the next time, like, comment, share, and subscribe, guys. And if this is bless you or you know someone that this will bless, please send it to them and share the video. And until the next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye, loves.